day as KU gets ready to unload a bevy of threes. The Jayhawks shooting lately has given everyone much to cheer about. Tonight, Kansas puts their unbeaten record on the line against the Golden Grizzlies of Oakland. It's the mega special of the day on Black Friday. Jayhawk basketball for free and coming into your home now. Tonight's game is brought to you by Delta Dental, proud sponsor of Kansas Athletics. By Toyota, let's go places. By Rally House, show your colors. And by the Kansas Lottery, dream bigger. Tuesday, the Kansas Jayhawks have reloaded. The television home of the Jayhawks has full court coverage. Join us 30 minutes before. Monday, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Nuggets Jazz at 10, Tuesday on ESPN. We hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving weekend. We've got a feast for you tonight as we gobble up some Jayhawk basketball. Tonight, they take on the Golden Grizzlies of Oakland from Rochester, Michigan. Well, hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong. This is Jeff Hawkins. He's filling in for Chris Piper tonight. And, of course, you know that he was a great point guard here for the Jayhawks and a great shooter, too. Kansas shooting great right now. They take on a Golden Grizzly team that's very athletic. What kind of problem do they present? They're, this is a team that is very explosive. With their guard play, they can stretch the D. It's going to really make this Jayhawk team really get out there and really see what they can do defensively. But this is a team that can put up numbers in bunches. Well, I talk about numbers. We're going to talk about two guys that really fill up the net right now in our Spectrum Sports Spotlight. Let's start with Kendrick Nunn of the Golden Grizzlies. This is a guy that's very explosive as well. He put up 36 points his first home game. This is a guy that's averaging 24 points, five rebounds, five assists. It's going to be a really great matchup tonight. And Jayhawk, speed me Kylo. I don't know what to say about what he's done over the last couple of games. It's been great. He's a senior leader. He's obviously putting the ball in the basket, averaging 24 points. If you look at those numbers, 65% from the field goal, 71% from the three-point. It's going to be a fun game watching these two match up together. One of the real good guys in college basketball is this man in the middle, Greg Campy. He's been guiding the Golden Grizzlies now in his 34th season, almost 600 wins in his hip pocket. Here's his starting lineup brought to you by Delta Dental of Kansas. Protect your healthy smile. Learn more about individual and family plans at DeltaDentalPS.com. It's Nunn and Neely and, oh, you remember Martez Walker when he was with the Longhorns. Jalen Hayes is back in after serving a four-game suspension. And Isaiah Brock, we all salute him and thank him for his four-year military service. Let's talk about service to his community. Here's Bill Self. He's a Hall of Famer. And he's got 420 wins here, 627 overall. Amazing. Amazing. And here's his Delta Dental. Starting five, and again, it's a guard-oriented lineup with Vic Graham, Mikhail Luke, and Newman, the four guards. And the big fella, Goat Azabuki, is in the middle. Well, we watched Kansas just shoot lights out last couple of games. Last game, they set a record. 
with 19 trays against Texas Southern. You were on a team that had 16 in the game, and you had five of yeah. those 16. And it's, it, I, I, I was a part of that special team, but this is a really special team that can really stretch it. They remind me of how they move the ball like the Spurs, and they shoot the ball lights out like the, the Warriors. So this is obviously a fun team if they can definitely stay healthy and stay out of foul trouble. Yeah, that's a pretty mighty comparison as it we is. check out our diagnosis of the game presented by Diagnostic Imaging Center. I think that one of the biggest things they can do is continue to move the ball. If you look at that game last against Texas Southern, they really moved the ball, shared the ball well. They had 27 assists that game. If they can continue to do that, that will really help them out. And I think one of the biggest things they need to do is feed the beast. They need to feed that big fella down there. He's, <laughs> he's averaging 85% from the field. So anytime you get the ball, you got to get that down to the to the big fella down low and feed that beast. If you are listening to this, Mr. Azubuki, that is Jeff Hawkins calling you a beast, not yeah. me. <laughs> He's a beast. I, that, that's me. He is, man. If he gets close to me, oh. I, I, I'm pretty still quick enough. I think I can run away from him. <laughs> oh, she's been great, though. 85% yeah. from the field, number one in the country. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Jayhawks in their home white. The Golden Grizzlies in black. And here we go, the day after Thanksgiving. And the opening tip from the Beast. From the Beast. He's ready to go. Devontae Graham brings it up. He's averaging 10 assists a game. Now Vic turns the corner. To the That's beast. the way to start it out. Wow. Right to the Beast. You gotta, you gotta feed that guy. Great job by Ladrill coming off that screen hard, getting into the lane, forcing help up the lane. They fed him. <laughs> they fed him, You're right. Good rotation by Vic to knock that one out of bounds. Let's look at it again. And that's just great, Ladrill Vic coming off that screen hard, forcing help, and just lobbed it up to the big fella. He's still eating turkey dinner right now. Ooh. Walker, he can fill it up from outside. Back out to Braylon Neely. Neely averaging about five assists a game. Hayes. Shot clock at one. Good rebound by Malik Newman. Hello, Newman. Doak. Even when it comes out yeah. of his hands, he almost makes it. Yeah, it is. That's, and I, I think that's going to be a mismatch all game. They just need to go to that big guy all day, get him going early, and I obviously work inside, outside. That's a tough matchup for either Jalen Hayes or Isaiah Brock. That foul on Brock, his first. And this is the one area where Azubuki really struggles. In this area that he's going to have to continue to improve at. Yeah, Jayhawk, he's only 7 of 17 now from the free throw line. Yeah, this is something that, you know, is just going to have to get some extra reps in. He's going to get fouled. He's going to be on that line a lot of the time this year. As you know, it's very tough for the big guys because their hands are yeah. so huge. You know, just go go get one of your son's Nerf balls and try to shoot that and see how it feels. That's how those big guys feel with the normal yeah. son's ball. I'd still like to see more, more of these big guys that have those huge hands to shoot like Wilt did. Yeah, just go, yeah. Go, Underhand, yeah, you know? Go. Rebound gets away from Doak, all the way to Brock. Now none for three, no. Here comes Vic. Graham. Hands off from McKayla. That's a long three, and it's way short. Didn't look like he had his feet under him. Yeah, it didn't look like he had his feet set on that, and kind of took that a little early, but he's obviously been shooting pretty good, so he's giving a quick hit check. Tyler reverses nice. to the beast again. And I think that's the difference from speed from this year to last year. He's putting the ball on the floor. Yeah, he is. As you can see, nice move going baseline. He recognized that he had help and obviously giving it to the beast. He just wants to dunk everything. All right, Doak back at the line now. He's already practicing his form. He's got all four. Of Jayhawk of the Jayhawk points. He's got a little jam on his thumb, a little more tape on that right hand. Doesn't affect his dunks, but it might affect this. Nope. 
Nice stroke. Nice stroke. That was good. Just repeat that. There you go. Every time. Easier said than done. Looking inside. Nothing there. Now Neely. None. Again, he averages 24 a game. And Newman causes that turnover. And then he carried it. So he turned it right back yeah. over. And they did a really great job on the defensive end of fighting through those screens. This is a team that, that's guard heavy, so they're going to have to fight through a lot of screens. And they're, they're, they're switching those screens. They're getting through those screens heavy. Uh, this is going to be what they need to do in order to, to keep these guys and, and make them uncomfortable. Greg Campy's team won their first two games where they shot better than 50%. Last two games, they've shot just 34% from the field, and they've lost both of those. Inside, that was supposed to be a pass. Tyler step back. Oh, that's his yeah, favorite move. That is his favorite move. And to see him to do it this year with so much more confidence makes that move look even nicer. And that's a two. His first two. So 21 against Texas Southern and then 27 against South Dakota State. This is the last two point totals. And Coach Self was telling us he really played good against Kentucky, just the shots didn't fall. Yeah. And sometimes that's how the games work. You you play a great game, but shots don't fall. But I think that's why Coach Self makes sure he's they're, they're honing in on the defensive end on a lot of this. How do you defend a shot like this? You can't. I mean, you can just hope that it that it goes that it goes out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he really did a great job of creating separation on that step back in. He's six seven, so that step back is going to be long. So you go with that jab step in and then the step back. I mean, Larry Bird did that for years and years in the NBA. It's impossible to guard. It's impossible, and you're yeah. fading back from the basket as well, too. Yeah. Martez Walker, one of a few redshirt seniors on this team. They are one of the oldest teams in the country, the Golden Grizzlies. They've got Nunn and Hayes and Walker, all redshirt seniors, along with Nick Daniels. And then you bring in Isaiah Brock, again, who we can't thank him enough for his years of military service both Kuwait and Afghanistan. He's 24 years old, just a sophomore. Yeah, that's remarkable for him, you know, giving up his his time and effort to the to the, uh, to the military and still be able to come out and play. Graham a little unlucky, and then he feeds it inside. What a cut! As a rookie. I think the key word of the day is feed the beast, feed the beast. Seven points for the dope. Something inside, nothing there. None being cut off. And as a book, he just stuffed that one. And then none throws it out of bounds. You gotta love the defensive tips. It's tough. The, the Jayhawks are making it really tough right now for the Grizzlies to, to get uh, even a foot into the paint right now, which is awesome. Yo, yo. I mean, you see him fighting through screens, helping out. Yudoka doing a great job of reading that shot, coming up, helping off the screen, and getting the easy block. The turnover for the Golden Grizzlies, they're third already. He don't keep wants it. He's yeah. calling for it. Nice man. Oh, good recovery. Oh but there's as a boogie again. I'm starting to think that Coach Self, that they didn't feed him on Thanksgiving because he was for sure trying to eat tonight. <laughs> He's four for four, <laughs> nine first half points for Azubuki. Still eating leftovers. Three-pointer from Walker, no. So far, Oakland is one for six from the field, and they haven't hit a three yet. Well, the beast, how's he doing? It's a beast. He's hitting the boards, and he is just taking up and dunking. He's still eating Thanksgiving dinner. The most magical. A blockbuster season continues with the PK-80s. College basketball season is back with a vengeance. 16 teams. This is incredible. Well, it's been mostly the Azabuki show so far here today. Thanksgiving, certainly, for the dope. Yeah, just flop it up there, he'll go get it. This is a guy that is not afraid to, to dunk on your head. 
And obviously, <laughs> uh, you can see by his aggression. And, and you know what? His team, they're looking for him right now. And that's what they need to continue to do because this is the guy that can easily set the tone for the, for the Jayhawks and open up outside shooting. Nine points, two rebounds, a block shot. All that in five minutes, folks. And no fouls. And no fouls. That's the key right yeah. there. And no fouls. And so far for the Golden Grizzlies, they've only hit one shot out of six attempts. Three of their five points have come from the line. Mikhailu waiting for the traffic to clear. Back in to Azubuki with a left hand. No. He knew it was off to. Yeah, and then over the back for the foul. He went and chased it right away, but I think his touch around the rim is starting to get so much better. He's improving each game. Went with the left jump hook on that on that play right there. If he's not getting a dunk. You know, the thing is with him, he's got to stay out of foul trouble. Yes. With Billy Preston still not able to play, he's really the only true big guy that Kansas has. He's got to stay in game. He does. And I think that if he could take a page out of uh, Landon Lucas's book from last year, Landon did a, did a great job of mostly staying out of foul trouble. Uh, and I think if he can do that, that'll help out. Nice pass. Nice shot. Wow. That's my line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You can that borrow was, it. Yeah. <laughs> Great job by Devontae getting inside the lane, looking to dribble, penetrate, and Speed is getting his feet set and shooting like he normally does. When Speed is shooting the way he is right now, you've been in that kind of a streak. What's the basket look like? You don't, I, I don't think he really sees the basket. I just think that he feels that where, wherever he shoots the ball is going in. So he doesn't really even see a basket. He just knows he's shooting at a, he's shooting in an area and it's going in. Graham working around a pick. Got himself in a little bit of trouble and it's picked off by Hayes. A rare turnover for Devontae Graham who's been averaging 10 assists and only two, two turnovers a game. He's one of the leading assist guys in the country, Graham. Yeah. Fourth in the country at 10 per game. Garrett, good looking freshman. Don't take that in the bank. Don't take that. Great looking freshman. I, I, but one of the things that really impressed me with him is not his offensive. So anytime he can score an offensive bucket, that's huge. But his defensive intensity, I think, is really going to help yeah. his Jayhawks really get to the next level. Bill's kind of player, isn't he? Just yes, loves the yes, beat. love the D. Side, that's Brock. Trying to get it up over Lightfoot. And here's Graham with a rebound. Mikhailo with a burst of speed. And one. Okay. Great job by him using his body to, to create the contact and have enough body control to still finish the layup. Good, good pitch ahead again by Devontae. Sees the open play. Speed creating the contact, beating everybody down the floor to finish with the contact. He's just so much more aggressive, isn't he? He is. It's a new speed. I'm still starting to trying to get used to this speed. We all know he can shoot it from the outside, but uh, Coach Self is trying to stress to him so so many years that if he can get put the ball on the floor and create that way, it's going to open up his shot. And he's really, really starting to adapt and feel that now. No question. Seven points for Mikhailu so far. Hey, don't forget to join us on Tuesday night when the Jayhawks take on Toledo. That's coming up on Tuesday right here on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. Seven o'clock our broadcast. We expect to have Chris Piper back in the house with us for that game. Yeah, Bill Self's got to be happy again with the way his team has started here today against the Golden Grizzlies up 18 to 7. Kansas shooting 67 percent from the field while Oakland shooting just 20 percent two for 10. And yeah. McKayluk a big part of that. He's three for four from the field. Yeah, and Coach Self has to really extremely be happy with the way they're defending right now. Uh, forcing every time they shoot a shot, the, the defenders are, KU is in between ball and basket every time they're shooting a shot. They're not on the side of the, on the offensive player. So Coach Self has to really be happy with that. Mikhailu, he's been a little bit off on the line. Four of six, not yeah. horrible. Now five of seven. We expect him to be around an 85% yeah. free throw shooter. And he'll pick it up. I think he'll get to the line to line a little bit more this year, being aggressive, putting the ball on the floor. Nunn coming off a pick. Nice shot by Kendrick Nunn. Transfer from Illinois. 
And Kendrick's a guy that can go off. I mean, he had 36 in his in his first home game opener. He's averaging 24 for the season. This is a guy they may have to make sure they put a hand up every time he shoots. Kyler. Now Vic for three. Wow. How hot has he been? Over 50% from three-point range. And I guess he's going to say, anything you can do, I can do better. Comes back with the three right back in, right back from Ken, Kendrick's uh, three. Yeah, somehow he's getting lost in the shuffle, and Vic's averaging 18 points a game, and now is 12 for 22 from three-point land. Devontae Graham will go to the line. He's fouled on the play by Nick Daniels. Four turnovers now for the Golden Grizzlies, and that's their fifth team foul. First foul on Nick Daniels, and here's Graham, who is nine for ten at the line this year. And kudos to KU for you know that forcing Oakland to, to commit five team fouls. That means they're being aggressive, attacking the rim, and this is what a Jayhawk team is going to have to do. Obviously, vice versa, not being able to. They, they want to make sure they're not in foul trouble, but they want to make sure they're putting, being aggressive, putting the other team in foul trouble, getting to the easy points on the line. Stan Scott has checked in for the Golden Grizzlies, a freshman out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Already a 13 point lead for the Jayhawks. Poked away, loose ball. And finally, last touch by Graham. It'll stay with the Golden Grizzlies. That was a great help by Mitch showing showing on that screen because uh, he was coming off that screen hard, and uh, Mitch did a really good job showing on that, getting his hand on that, getting a deflection. Graham will get a quick breather. Malik Newman will replace him. Vic just stole that one away. And then Vic back out to Newman. Great inside outside, good look, just in and out. None. Good move. Great move right there. None now with five points. And that's an illegal screen by Mitch Lightfoot. And Vic coming off the screen, getting his feet set. This is what he's doing. Knock down three ball for the three, for the Jayhawks. Golden Grizzlies have hit their last two shots after going just two for their first ten, but still it's the Jayhawks by 11. Sophia Guan and Lawrence is home for Hawk Talk with head coach Bill Self. Tune in to Spectrum Sports of the Jayhawk IMG Radio Network and check your local listings. You see all those Big 12 championships for Coach Self and these Jayhawks 13 in a row, which ties UCLA's all-time record. You were a part of it. That was pretty impressive. I was uh, fortunate enough to, to get the first two and start out, start out the run, but yep. uh, it's, it's been impressive to see this decade run that Coach Self has put together, and uh, it just... But this team is just it's gonna be it's gonna, it's gonna be tough to beat a team like this. I think it's amazing. I think it's one of the most remarkable records in college basketball history. I really do. And the reason I say that is college basketball is so much different than when UCLA, not to take anything at all away from their 13 straight, but it's a different game. There are yeah. so many more good teams yeah. in college basketball. And to dominate a power five conference the way they have, I think it's just truly remarkable. And like you mentioned, it's, it's tough in this era. I mean, it's like you, it's, it's a different era than it was back yeah. then, and I feel like it would be harder to do something as what they're doing right now. And uh, obviously, kudos to Coach Self and his coaching staff for preparing his guys day in, day out. And year in, year out. Yes. None has hit the last two shots for the Golden Grizzlies. And a lob inside to Brock, who can't find the range. Like yeah. the girl lost the shoe on yeah, that. <laughs> and then none reach in with a foul. That'll allow LeGerald to get the sneaker back on. Leek Newman. I still feel like he is. 
kind of finding his way with KU. I expect him to score more and more as time goes on. I would agree. Uh, this is different. He sat out a, a full year, and he's you know just trying to figure out what is actually what he has to do to to, to please Coach Self. It's different being a practice player because Coach Self's really not looking at you, but when you actually get in the minutes, you got to kind of find that out. I foul on Neely, his second. Seven team fouls already on the Golden Grizzlies this half. But Gerald Vick, now well, he's figured it out here in his junior campaign. He has. You know, he's been impressive of watching. Uh, going back to the, the the game that could have in the sweet, uh, excuse me, the Elite Eight when they played Oregon, I think that's when he really started to come out of his, out of his shell. It was just fun to see him continue that on yeah. in the next season. Absolutely. Especially with Frank and Josh being gone, someone would have had to step up and good for LeGerald for doing that. Vic will get a breather and Devontae Graham back in there. Neely has it poked away briefly by Newman, almost got in that passing lane. Now Walker drives in and he's fouled. I think they got Mikhailu. Well, that's on Garrett. Marcus Garrett trying to rotate over to help out. That's the first on Garrett. Only the fourth team foul on KU. Now Walker at the line in the 83% free throw shooter. You know, Walker got in trouble at Texas. He had a charge against him. Texas dismissed him from the team. Really, no one came calling until Greg Campy did. And Campy, knowing that Walker was from the Detroit area, he said, listen, I want to give you a haven. I want to bring you back into college basketball. And Martez Walker says, I literally thank him every day because he resurrected my life, not just my basketball That's career. That's awesome. And it's also good, you know, can't be spending in the game for 34 years, so he kind of knows, you know, kind of how players can, you know, do some things and mess up, but also for him to give him a second chance. It's got to feel good for Devontae to see one go down. Yes, especially with the shooting slump that he's been in. Obviously, the more he can see the ball going, the more confidence he's going to get. I think it's just a matter of seconds yes. before he's out of any kind of so-called slump. Boy, Newman almost got to another one. None slips down. And an air ball thrown out by Hayes. The Jayhawks are doing a really good job on, when, once they get dribble penetration, uh, rotating, helping out and rotating. That is very good with them. Look at that action with Lightfoot nice. and Graham on yeah. a two-man game. Mitch is starting to really come around, too. I think he's getting confidence as each game goes by. Uh, and, and great by Devontae getting to the lane, forcing help again. And all Mitch had to do was cut to the rim and take an easy layup. And he's necessary. I yes. mean, with, especially with Billy Preston on the sidelines, you need Lightfoot. And there he is again with another block. And I think he's starting to figure it out a little bit, too. That is how you get the opposing team to call a timeout, run like that. This crowd is getting into it. And a great job, give and go. Devontae sizing them up, getting to the lane, forcing help, get, finding the open man, and Mitch is cutting to the basket. And Mitch still not giving up. Mitch said, I'm not done. I want to get a block on the other end. It just shows that he's attention. And then we come down, Malik throwing the great lob to Mikhailu. He just says, throw it up there. I'll go get it. Jayhawks forcing the Grizzlies to call a timeout. Mikhailu Guardian double figures with 10. Lightfoot, by the way, he has 12 block shots this year. You know, he's, he's, he's stepping up. I think he's starting to figure out that obviously they're low on the depth chart and he knows that he needs to play, but I think he's starting to believe that he deserves to be out there. And you can tell by his play on the offense and defensive end now. And he's keeping Azubuki on the bench right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I don't think Azubuki's been back in. He hasn't he's... since he picked up that foul. That's some good minutes for Mitch to be getting right now, too, as well. The more confidence he can get. Six assists already for KU. Hayes trying to dump it inside. And Graham will pick up the loose ball. That one fell out of the chandelier. Graham 
throws it up, a teardrop. Couldn't tell if he was going to lop that or float that, but he said he went, go, went ahead and went with the float on that. Poked away by Graham. It'll stay with the Golden Grizzlies, who right now are being overwhelmed by the Jayhawks, who have scored eight straight points. And this Jayhawk team is flying around on the defensive end. I think this is what they're going to have to continue to do to be successful. Force everything on the, on the defensive end and let the offense come easy. Non pulls up. That's sort of a settled three, isn't it? It is. You know, they, a frustrated it, three. It is. And, and, the, and you got to give credit to the Jayhawks because they've made them take contested shots and they just can't get into a rhythm in their offense. There goes Lightfoot and Graham again, the old two-man game, and I think you're going to get Devontae. Yeah, I kind of let the elbow, the chicken yeah. wing, go out a little I bit. Think on if the move. Yeah, I think if he would have, yeah, I think if he would have just uh, stepped over and uh, just put his hip into him instead of extending his arm out a little bit, that would have been a legit move. But because you see his elbow moving a little bit, I think that's why they called it. But great move. A lot of NBA players do that move. Yeah, and that's foul on Devontae Graham is first. Now five team fouls on KU. This team is very scrappy on the defensive end. Garrett stepped in. That'll be his second foul. The Golden Grizzlies have not had a field goal since the 11:48 mark. They've gone 0 for 4 on that time stretch, and Greg Campy not happy at all. His team just 4 for 16 in the game now, 25 percent. Yeah, that'll leave you scratching your head. Yeah. It's a very tough environment that he's come into as well. Hayes, you threw up an air ball on a three earlier. Barely caught iron that time. Lightfoot for three. He can hit that. He's now four for six from three-point range this year. He's starting to be a three-point shoot threat as well, too. And I think the more he plays, just the more his confidence is going to continue to arrive. That's a walk. That's another turnover. This one from James Beck. That is now seven turnovers for the Golden Grizzlies. The most mad. Now the Jayhawks sizzling 36 points, shooting 14 of 19 in the game, 74%. That's beyond gold medal yeah. performance. That's like plutonium. <laughs> yes, anything they almost throw up is going in. <laughs> oh. Wow. And they're five for their last five. Coach Self got to be just thrilled. There. I mean, they're so in sync right now. The way they're moving the ball, the way they're playing defense at both ends of the court. Yeah. They're limiting the Golden Grizzlies to just four of 17 while they're 14 of 19. Yeah. And Azabuki's going to come back in. I wonder if he's still hungry. Probably. <laughs> You're not seven foot without being yeah. hungry every now and then. Azabuki, by the way, has nine points in five minutes of play. Yeah, so, you know the Jayhawks have 18 points in the in the paint, so I mean he's half he has half of that. So obviously that's a, a good place to start going to. Yeah, they're not shooting as many threes as they did the other night. Working on that inside game. Mikhailo drives in and a rare miss. Non lost the handle and then double dribbled, and Azabuki got poked. I think Coach Self is a little mad. They're not stopping ball in transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and although this is this score is a little lopsided, this is a team that they're going to have to hone down and be able to, to do these little things to, to really please, please Coach Self, especially on the defensive end and defensive transition. He's got high standards. Yes, yes. It's okay, though. He makes you better. Yes. And then Vic throws up an air ball. That's two misses in a row after we were bragging about their shooting. Eight turnovers for the Golden Grizzlies. And almost another one. Step back three. Nope. Poked around. Last touch by Vic. And the Golden Grizzlies are now one of eight from three-point range. And that's the shot that should have went in. Um, the Jayhawks got lucky on that. They didn't have anybody rotating. Uh, looks like they weren't talking on defense and didn't know who was guarding who. But that was a wide open three that should have went down. 
And Kylo can't gather in the rebound. Another opportunity for the Golden Grizzlies. So one for nine from three point range. It's like they've almost given up Oakland on trying to get the ball inside. Yeah. Newman. Step back that'll go for none. That's a great move by a great player. Yeah, he is a good player. He just has a great knack for, for putting the ball in the basket. He was on the all freshman team in the Big Ten when he was at Illinois. Scored more than 1,000 points for the Fighting Illini. And now a foul called on James Beck. That'll send Newman to the line. And great by. <laughs> Great move by Newman by setting him up with the crossover, getting to the lane, being able to take the contact. Obviously didn't get the first pass of the line. Newman, six for six from the line this year. And that's his first point of the game. He makes that look easy. He does. He has such a smooth, pretty stroke. Oh, it's nice. That's poetry in motion right there, folks. <laughs> None. There's a handful. Yes. And none now with nine points. He has the last eight points for the Golden Grizzlies. Oh. Yeah, they got him with a little. That's the second. Look, Doak was ready to make a strong move, but just extended that arm just a little bit. If he would have kept that arm in and uh, did all the force with his shoulder, he would have been able to get a shot up. So Doak will cool his heels for the rest of the half with two fouls. He brings Lightfoot back into the fray. Quick double down low and another turnover. This will be over and back. Nine turnovers for the Golden Grizzlies. Nine. Greg can't be like, oh my goodness. I mean, his collars yeah. turned over as well. At least he can sleep at night and know that he's, you know, playing in one of the toughest arenas. Yeah. This is great game film for them. The Grizzlies next travel to Tulsa to take on Oral Roberts, a former conference foe when they were in the Summit League. I would have counted had it gone. Instead, Devontae Graham will go to the line. And that's another foul on James Beck. That's two on him. Good job for the Jayhawks this year. You know, getting to the, they've gotten to the free throw line 10 times uh, so far this game. And on season average, they're getting there about 14, 14 yep. times. So it's good for them to, you know, get to the free throw line and show that, you know, we, they can be aggressive. For you numbers. People out there, Jayhawk shooting 66% from the line. You think it's not a good free throw shooting team. It is, but because you have to factor in as a Buki's yes. free throws, yes. and that brings the average down. R really down. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're actually a great free throw shooting yeah. team, and uh, typically teams that can fill it out from the three point can normally knock down some easy free throws. Greater down the curve, a really good free throw shooting yeah. team, except for one guy. <laughs> Quick double again, and good rotation by Vic. Here comes Graham. Newman up ahead, and Martez Walker used a burst of speed to knock it away. It'll stay with KU. Yeah, I don't think they could figure out if they were if Newman was cutting to the basket yeah. or flaring out to the three-point. So at the last minute, he kind of flared out a little bit. Here comes that flex action. Oh, double screen on the sideline. Newman, a little unlucky on the shot. He's 0 for 2 from the field. KU now 0 for their last three. None. He's been the one shining star for the Golden Grizzlies so far tonight. He's got nine of their 18 points. Mikhailu nice. and Lightfoot follow. Wow. Good job by Miz. Continue to run the floor. Although there was a guard ahead of him, and looked to clean up that rebound. Lightfoot's best nine minutes of the year. Palombizio. Nope. Tipped home. Nope. 
And then finally tipped in by Hayes. And Nikhailo sweeps him down the court. Wow, what a great full court. Three-quarter court alley you pass from Devontae. That is a tough pass to make to get that on point. And great job for Steve for timing that right and getting it. Yeah, how do you do that? None answers at the other end. That's a special assist that for Devontae yes. Graham. That's five assists already this game. And that's what he does. He, he gets his team involved early, and that's what a leader of the team should do. McCallick already with a dozen points. Graham, a little step back. Nope. And the rebound to Beck. None. Switch hands in midair. Bounce pass to Lightfoot, and he's fouled by Palambizio. Oh, well, we got a timeout. 44-22. KU has doubled up on the Golden what a Grizzlies. Great pass. Three quarter court pass. New Year's Day is college football playoff day. So invite everybody over. Ah, it's Black Friday. Doka's dunks on the list. Those are free of charge and expensive to the Golden Grizzlies. I don't think too many people want to wait in line to get that dunk on your head, though. 35% <laughs> off. Great sign. <laughs> Well, how about the guy that's been playing a lot for him today, Mitch Lightfoot? You got to be very impressed with him. Right now, put, he has seven points right now, four rebounds. Very active in only 10 minutes. And I think this is nothing but a confidence boost. He's really showing a lot of confidence out there on the defense standpoint, stretching out, shooting threes, cutting to the basket, tip dunking rebounds in. So uh, Mitch is really showing that he is deserving of this, of this position. And now he's at the line. Lightfoot, one of two coming into the game today from the line. Eight first half points. Keep in mind, folks, his career high is 10 points. Well, he's feeling really good right now. Mm -hmm. He's only one away from that now. Like for the third straight game, the Jayhawks are going to eclipse 50 points in the first half. Good save by Mikhail yeah. Luke, and now here comes Devontae Graham. And inside, a hold inside. They had a mismatch down there when Palombizio came out. Poor Braylon Neely was trying to guard Lightfoot. Yeah, and that's just a, yeah, that's an easy mismatch for them. And uh, Devontae recognized that very early. And he's just too small to, to guard Mitch for that, at that position. Neely with a foul. That's his first. Jayhawks in the double bonus. And so now Lightfoot. He has tied his career high. Let's see if he can take one more smooth one. There it is. New career high, and we'll see where it ends by the end of the night. He's one point ahead right now. And he's the second Jayhawk to go into double figures this half. And Kyluk has a dozen points. Nice move by Palombizio. What's the objective of that weave when they run that weave? Well, if you get caught switching, as what happened two plays in a row, Neely ended up on Mitch uh, on, on Lightfoot, and that's just a mismatch. If they're switching those screens, and if they're not switching those screens, coming off that, once you get that hand, that handoff, you can come off that screen hard and just be able to attack the lane. That's when you drive the lane. That's when you drive. If they don't switch, you if, drive. If you don't, if, if they're not, if you don't switch, you drive. But they're obviously they're switching a little bit, so you can work a little bit of mismatch with. Uh, with uh, Mitch, obviously, he's going to be a guard on him. So, so then you just wait for the mismatch. You just wait you for just, the mismatch. Just, as they keep switching, you're like, all right. Like Coach Self says, get to the second and third side. You just keep that ball moving until so something opens a, up. There's another bump by Neely, and that's going to send Graham to the line. In the last game, the Jayhawks had all seven guys that are scholarship players scoring double figures. 
in this game, all seven that have played have scored. And Graham now has eight points and five assists in this first half. Garrett will check out, Newman back in. And Graham now five for six from the line. Jayhawks tonight are 15 of 18 from the line. That's 83%. If they can shoot 83% for the season, they're going to be even tougher to beat. And two of the three misses are from Dope. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. They'd be shooting over 90% without that. That's just an easy sign that they should always stay aggressive and get to the line. Now, I'm, not, such a great I'm not picking on Dope, folks, because I get it. Big guys, it's hard to shoot free throws. I mean, it's really hard. He also has nine points in the game. Graham works in. That won't go. Lightfoot tried to keep it alive. Here comes Walker with a head of steam. Man, uh, I don't know if she got a piece of it, but I think he did. Yeah, it looked like he tipped a little bit of that. That'll be a travel on Newman. And that's seven turnovers for KU this half. Malik could have probably just looked to swing that, cut through, get the ball moving a little bit. They didn't need to, to rush that shot right there. Stan Scott, who hasn't played much this year. None. A step back. Nope. Newman. Wow. Was that a burst of speed? Oh, wow. That is a guy that can stop and go, get to the lane. He's very, very aggressive on the offensive end. Gets the rebound, goes coast to coast. Gives him a little in and out move and nice finish at the rim. Being able to change his shot in air, take the contact, and still lay it up soft. When That's you're backpedaling move. and he does that move on you, yeah. Oh, you're just like, oh, dude. Yeah, some guys come might on. stick a foot out and trip you or just foul you. So. <laughs> I would foul you. <laughs> just for the record, I would foul. <laughs> and Newman completes the three point play. I think that can be the strength of this team. The Jayhawks getting on the foul line. That's going to put so much pressure on that defensive team. Yeah, they've shot 19 free throws this half. And another steal. Newman. Nice. Luke Newman reading the passing lanes. How many steals is that for KU this half? My goodness. That's eight steals in the half. A little soft touch from Kendrick Nunn at the other end. And this is the use it or lose it timeout for Bill Self. Yep. Going to come in with the play probably that they've been working on. What's he like in the huddle? Uh, he can be intense. It, de yeah. it, de it depends on what you just did before you get to the huddle. So, <laughs> but for the most part, he's he's going to be intense. He's going to he's going to give you the direction you need. And if you're not if you're not taking his advice as he likes as he thinks you should, he's going to let you know. He's, he's going to hold your pump. He's a great teacher, though. Isn't oh, he's he? a great teacher. Unbelievable. Well, single game tickets are now available for some select Kansas men's basketball games. Don't miss a chance to join the tradition, be a part of the great home court advantage in college basketball. Tickets available calling 800-34-HAWKS or KUTickets.com. Jayhawks, by the way, all time in this place, they've done pretty well. When you say 760 wins against just 110 losses, wow. and in the Bill Self era, 223 and 10. Wow. That is that is impressive. Oh, just let you know, it's tough to get win. It's tough to get a win in here. Oh. And the crowd makes sure they, they they bring it every every game. Last time KU lost here, those folks were on their honeymoon. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> It's been a long time. Yeah. But five second differential between shot and game clock. A couple of ball fakes and, and not a good shot. And then he lost the handle. 
Devontae just maybe trying to do a little bit too much, but great job by getting into the lane. Yeah. Just kind of mistimed it on the shot, and, you know, that's something he's been struggling a little bit this year, but that's something as time goes, he'll get that adjusted and fixed. You know what? It's okay for him to work on it now. Yes. In these kind of blowout type games. Walker, no, and the rebound by Mikai Luke and another dominating half for your Jayhawks. Wow. It's a fun half to watch. 55, 26, and her halftime break. It's Curtis Townsend and Bill Self talk it over on their way to the locker room. The Jayhawks, led by McTyler with a dozen, Lightfoot with 11, has a bookie with nine more, and Graham had nine points and five assists. Back with the Delta Dental halftime report. <laughs> Welcome back in College Basketball Live, sitting here with a few ACC coaches. There's one first-time head coach in this group, David Padgett. When, when some assistants, most assistants, get a head coaching job, it happens in April. You got yours in October. How would you assess the challenges of getting your team ready for the season in the preseason? I don't know if we have enough time to talk about the challenges <laughs> we face, but, uh, you know, the good news about the team I inherited uh, we have a, a very good mix of older players who've played college basketball, seniors, juniors, even a sophomore in B.J. King. And we have a very talented freshman class. Obviously, they're freshmen. There's a lot they need to learn and go through. And there's no easy way to get freshman experience except to let them go through it. But our older guys have been tremendous in trying to help the younger guys and get ready for the season. So just each practice, we're just trying to get better than we were the day before. You had a little more lead time when you stepped over from an assistant to replacing John Calipari there at, at Memphis. What advice would you, would you give him stepping in, although the time frame is a little bit different? No, Dave is going to do a great job, and he's a basketball guy, and his dad was a really good coach as well, too, and, and so he's going to do great. And, um, you know, they're, they're good. Their team's really good, and, you know, following – you know, with Coach Patino, and you know when I took over at Memphis, following Coach, uh, Coach Calipari, it's just they're hard to do because you know the success that you're following in those, in both guys. So, you just do the best you can. It was a primary head coaching job there at Memphis. You're just getting started, Mike. Reflect on, on what what it was. You're at the pinnacle now, the coaching in the ACC. Reflect to your first head coaching job when you slid into that chair and had that ownership maybe an overwhelming feeling what was that like i think it was i remember my first year at the university of delaware in 1995 i i wasn't very trusting of delegating i tried to do everything and a little too much i've learned to delegate more but i think the biggest thing is you try to be yourself you know you've worked for a guy you've been with a head coach i think to develop your own identity and be yourself as soon as you can get confident doing that's going to be helpful jim what was yeah, that like? my, my first head coaching job was at a Division II school called American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, recruiting there was very, very difficult. But we spotted a young man I thought could really turn our program around. His name is Rick Carlisle. And we tried to recruit <laughs> Rick Carlisle to a Division II school. <laughs> Two years later, I was the assistant at Virginia, and uh, Rick called me. He was playing at the University of Maine, and he transferred to Virginia helped us get to the Final Four, now has been in the NBA since 1984. So when you're looking at players and trying to build a program, you got to find good players. Rick was a good player. We just couldn't get him to AIC. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. You might be someplace soon that you can actually get him. Buzz, your, your first head coaching yeah, job. What I, was that like? I remember it vividly. Uh, very honored, grateful, uh, bigger than any dream I'd ever had. Was very thankful that the University of New Orleans would hire me and uh, have felt that away every day over the last 11 years. Brad? Yeah, I was very blessed. Uh, I took over at uh, UNC Wilmington, having been an assistant there for eight years under a very good coach and Jerry Wainwright. So the program was in, in a great situation. We had good players coming back, a good foundation. We'd been to the tournament. And so really the, the ease of transition for me was, was much easier than most in that I, I already knew the league, I knew the university, uh, and Coach Wainwright had given me a ton of responsibility. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. You mentioned getting to uh, the NCAA tournament, and when you're at maybe a, a lower level or a mid-major school, it's, getting to the tournament's a great accomplishment. When you're in the ACC, it's not just getting to the tournament, it's making a run. You could have a great year, maybe even win a championship in the league, but you don't get to the second weekend, and uh, it's almost forgettable in some fans' eyes. How do you guys 
self-assess when it comes to success relative to the NCAA tournament, whether it's getting there or advancing deep? Well, for me, I mean, I, I've tried to be better uh, just about your own personal success and what you define it as. I think when I, my time at Memphis, uh, I, was just, I was really unhealthy uh, mentally uh, and, and just because I, I lived and died by every single game. And I, I, so when I came to Georgia Tech, I tried to have a better perspective on things, and, and it's a work in progress. Uh, it's hard to get to the tournament. I mean, I thought we had a good year last year, and we finished 11th place in this league. And I mean, so, and we had eight wins in the league. I don't know if we'll ever get eight wins again in this league. I mean, it's hard to do. And so, you know, if you, you just do the best you can, I've tried to be better about that and focusing on just doing the best you can and let the chips fall where they fall. Now, as, a, as a player, obviously, you want to get as deep as you can. What about as a coach? How do you, he said when he started out, he didn't have a healthy perspective. You're just starting out. What's your perspective? Well, I think at Louisville, it's, it's just been long established that getting to the tournament per se isn't enough. I think making a deep run has, has come to be expected over the last 15, 16 years and obviously we've had a lot of success. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself or on my team to say, hey, we have to get to the Elite Eight or we have to get to the Final Four because that's just not realistic. You know, everything we've been going through, me as a first time head coach, that wouldn't be fair to anybody. So we're just trying to have as good of a season as we can have, win as many games as we can have, kind of just break up into three segments. You got non-conference, you've got conference, and then postseason. So just take it one segment at a time. How does that change as you get deeper into your career? Because when we refer to you guys, how many Final Fours does he have? How many national championships? Well, that dynamic happened a little bit this year for us. We, the two previous years we've been to the Elite Eight, we get knocked out in the second round by a very good West Virginia team. But we got, we finished in the top four of the regular season and got to the championship game of the ACC tournament. And so I was trying to tell our guys that, you know, we had a pretty good run and, and even uh, it was even harder trying to explain that to my fans. But maybe they finally got it at the end of the day. <laughs> what about you, you made a deep run with George Mason. Now here you are at Miami. Yeah. 20 years ago, I had an incredible opportunity to talk to the great John Wooden, who won 10 national championships. And he talked about one thing that you had to have to be successful as a coach. And he said, you have to have balance. You have to have the understanding of what your expectations are, maybe very different than what anybody else is. And you just have to have that balance in your life, balance with your team so that you're enjoying the journey. Not so much talking about, did you make the final four? So, uh, and that's the way we've tried to approach it. We just want to be the best we can be every season we're competing. Uh, last thing, Buzz, it's validation though, right? I mean, NCAA tournament, that's a, that's a thing you can sink your teeth into. I think it just depends on what validation and who you're wanting the validation from. Uh, not trying to be holier than now. I like playing in the NCAA tournament because that means I have an extended period of time with our players each day. And so whether we win, whether we get there, I think that's for other people to judge. I think my responsibility as a leader is to help them grow to be the best people they can be. And if that means we play a couple extra games, maybe that time period helps them even more. And Brad, you've had a taste of it there at Clemson. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a while and certainly something that we want to get back to. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, playing in March with a chance to advance. That's kind of a phrase we use to, to, to kind of keep our momentum going. And I think it's something that you put the NCAA tournament out there, it's not as easy at some programs. It's more, it's more of a challenge. And, uh, certainly you analyze each team and, and just try to get better working on that with that, that thought in mind for us. Okay. Good perspective, guys. We'll wrap it up when we return. These guys have left uh, quite a mark on their teams. What about the, the digital footprint, social media? Get into that for a few minutes, guys. All right, let's start with your health. Yeah. You know, you're 70, and yeah. a lot of people want to ask, how, how much longer yeah. do you want to go? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, I'm going to yeah, ask that. Gonna I'm going to ask you, right. how much longer do you want to go? Yeah, I want to, uh, I didn't get my knee replaced to retire. Let's put it that way. So I'm 70 years old. I think I'm definitely younger at heart. Uh, I have the knowledge, though, of a 70-year-old who's coached for 42 years and has coached 11 years with the U.S. team. and. I still I think that's a, a good combination, especially at a great school. I want to make a difference. I'm enthusiastic. Come on, Kyle, I got you. Grayson Allen, when describing you, called you a friend. Yeah. Which is interesting for a 21-year-old to call a 70-year-old a friend. Right. How do you think you've been able to connect with players these days and change and, and be able to adapt? 
Well, I think it's up to the teacher to adapt so that his or her teachings are accepted easier by their pupils. I've had to adapt a lot. Not values, work ethic, and all that, but how you communicate, how you dress, what jokes you tell, do you stay current. Grayson Allen is a really good basketball player. He also appears to be a dirty basketball player. Well, his reputation for this precedes him. What gives you confidence that, that Grayson, if you have confidence, that Grayson has kind of gotten past the, the issues, the tripping issues? And he, and he yeah, can... well, you know, it, it, look, there's a, it, is it more tripping issues or what everyone made of, of a couple ish, issues? I want Grayson to be Grayson. Grayson's, a, I think, as good a player as there is in the country. And uh, I want him to be a leader, and I want him to not have a rearview mirror. How much did you worry about him last year, though, because of all the public outcry uh, and the attention that he got? How much were you worried that he'd yeah. be able to handle it all? You would have thought that there was a capital offense that had occurred. That's the attention, I think, that our program brings the scrutiny and you know you have to learn to live under that microscope but he has had an opportunity to be in incredible situations where you don't play at the beginning of your freshman year you are the hero of the national championship game you're an all-american as a sophomore and you have an incident and then that's unbelievably publicized and then you have another situation and then you're hurt the whole year holy mackerel He's lived a lifetime in those three years, and I, I think it'll all uh, end up you know, really, really good. How good can this team be? I mean, you have talent, you've got bigs. They're very different than a lot of your previous teams. Yeah, you know, our team is going to be very much a developing team. We have three guys in Marvin Bagley, Wendell Carter, and Marquise Bolden who are going to be pro players, maybe all three of them at the end of this year. We don't have the perimeter depth that we, you know, like the last few years, but we have more big guys. And so we have to adjust what we do, uh, and which we do every year. Has your outlook of recruiting one that's changed? People think it has. No, no, I, you know, everyone talks about us changing our recruiting philosophy. That's, that, that's not the case, you know. It's just that Grand Hill was in the mid 90s or early 90s. If Grand Hill was today, he'd go too. But we would have still recruited Grand Hill. You know, Leitner and Batty A, and that's when it started for us with Elton Brand, but he was even here two years. I have not changed. The landscape has changed to where it would be the best decision for them to go, and then I'm okay with that. New Year's Day is college football playoff day, so invite everybody over to watch the football. I do want to watch the college football playoff with you. Is the playoff the most important event in this world? Probably. Randy, get the TV. Even if your team's out, it's still a good reason to party, sweetie. Because the playoff is on, and it's going to be epic. The college football playoff semifinals, New Year's Day on ESPN. A blockbuster season continues with the PK-80s. College basketball season is back with a vengeance. 16 teams. This is incredible. 24 games. That gets my juices flowing, man. <laughs> Two brackets. That is big time. And now it all comes down to two championship games on one Sonic Blockbuster night. The PK-80 championship games tip Sunday at 8.30 on ESPN. Well, 55-26, our Delta Vigil halftime report comes to an end, and the Jayhawks, that's just a tour de force by Bill Self's team in that first half. Against a pretty good Golden Grizzlies team that's going to win the Horizon League and go on into the NCAA tournament. But Oakland just got waylaid, much like every other opponent. And look at the leading scorers in that first half. And again, Mikhailov with a dozen, Lightfoot with 11, the most impressive, Azabuki at nine, and just 
Six minutes of play. Graham with nine points, and he also had five assists. Yeah, and again, I think uh, with this with this Jayhawk team this year, obviously. Azubuki get nine points in a short amount of time. Uh, this is a, 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 a Jayhawk team that needs him on the court, so he's going to have to continue to be creative uh, and be smart on the defensive end and, and offensive end and not get any silly fouls. So here comes Neely of the Golden Grizzlies, kind of restart things for Oakland. They get it inside to Jalen Hayes. It's one of the easier buckets of the night. For look, Oakland. It looked like Speed got a little caught on that, losing his man a little bit and tried to play a little catch up. But didn't get caught on that. Didn't get caught on that. <laughs> and McCallick with 14. He's making it look easy right now. Hayes again. A lot of lefties on this Oakland. Yeah, team. it is. Is that different to defend? It, it is, because typically I think most guards, especially when you're guarding on the defensive end, you force guys left, because normally that's their weak hand. So you're forcing a lot of these guys to the strong hand. Neely with a three. He hasn't hit one yet this year. He's 0 for 4 for the season. Mikhailo gives it, although that one a little bit out of range. And a challenge shot by Vic. Graham comes back, back shoulder catch, and a three. Uh, there we go. I think he's starting to get his confidence back. That's all it takes is a couple of shots like that to get your confidence and get right back on track. A dozen points now for Devontae Graham. Jayhawks doing a good job talking on defense. Walker, no. Graham, good job of sealing Hayes. Newman, and one. Nice. It's a good, strong move going to the basket. Very aggressive. Sets him up with the crossover, comes in, has two guys on him. That's a football move when you're going up the, the middle of that line. And uh, he definitely flexed on him and uh, took it up strong. And again, nice touch being able to have all that contact and be able to finish with a soft touch at the rim. That's a foul on Kendrick Nunn, his second, and also a timeout for Greg Campy. He's not happy. We'll be back. Stop. Now the Jayhawks picking up where they left off. Gerald Vick and company, 7-2 to two lead in the second half, hitting three of their first four shots. And they've upped the ante to 62 to 28. Strike up the band. Seven straight points, by the way, for KU. With Jeff Hawkins, I'm Dave Armstrong. So glad to have you courtside with us here on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. I think that's a great start by the Jayhawks, especially on the defensive end. I'm a, you can't tell I'm a defensive guy, but uh, they really came out on the defensive end. And I always like to, to judge teams by, especially when the, the margin's a little bit different on the score, how are they going to come out and, uh, and play in the second half? And the Jayhawks came out with pretty good intensity in the second half. Blake Newman to become the fourth player in double figures tonight. That'll do it. He's got 10 points, three rebounds. A couple of steals. He's filling up the stat sheet tonight. And meanwhile, the Golden Grizzlies just one for 14 from three-point range. Neely. Well, changed directions and Kind of lost McCoy. Yeah, he, he, he kind of tricked me out on that. I thought he was going to kind of do the same spin that Devontae did in the first half, and he spent back the other way. So you don't feel bad for Svee. He faked you uh, out. Yeah, too. he got me too. Right. I thought he was, I didn't know how he was going to get out of that one. <laughs> but I'm sure Coach Self not happy with that. Yeah, yeah no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll be mad at you for getting faked yeah. out from over here. <laughs> Vic. <laughs> Kyler wasn't faked out that time. He got it back. Ooh, that was a nifty little pass. As a bouquet couldn't quite find the handle. Neely poked it away. None in transition. 
So none has both made threes for the Golden Grizzlies. And he's their leading scorer by far with 16 points. There goes the weave again. So far they're not switching. And there's the mismatch inside. And now Azabuki with 11. Malik did a great job on attacking the lane, and then he did a small step back to force the defense to come out because I thought he was going to shoot it, and then he just lobbed it up. That was a tremendous play by Malik to read that. There's two timeouts already this half for Greg Campy. Malik sizing up coming off that screen. And it looks like he's going to step back and shoot it to force that defense to come up and just lobs it to Udoka and says, go up there and get it, big fella. Forced both guys to go out there and guard him off that screen and just looked open and Udoka's wide open at the middle. When you can get the opposing coach to call not one but two timeouts yeah. in the first three and a half minutes yeah. of a half, you know you're doing your job. You know you're doing your job. And, you know, I, I'm sure Greg's over there trying to figure out what his, what his team is doing because I, I know this, this is a lopsided game, but I don't think that he thought it would be as this much lopsided, again, taking two quick timeouts in the, in the second half. So I know he's not happy with his team. Not at all. I remember the game years ago, Justice Thigpen and the Iowa State Cyclones came to Allen Fieldhouse. And late in the game, and KU was winning by 40 or 50. And Justice was dribbling over near Johnny Orr, the head coach then of the Cyclones. And all of a sudden, Johnny called timeout and pulled Justice Thigpen out of the game. And I asked him later, Coach, what happened there? And he said, well, he came over and he's dribbling the ball next to me. And he looks over at him and he says, Coach, what do you want to try now? This isn't working. <laughs> He said, I didn't know whether to laugh or pull him out, so I pulled him out. Wow, that he is goes, hilarious. one of the great lines ever. <laughs> that is a great line. <laughs> wow. Enjoy your experience. Yeah. Now, hopefully it's not your last. Yes. Yeah. Last game, Oakland lost to Syracuse, but by 24, they're down 32 in this game. They're playing two good programs. Like I said earlier, this is this would be a good, some good film session for for Coach Campy and his crew, uh, looking to hopefully make a, a NCAA tournament run this year. Good move by Walker. That was better ball movement, too, by yeah, the Golden and, and, Grizzlies. And that's what they've been lacking. KU, you got to credit KU for doing a great job on the defensive end, but if they can get the ball moving, they'll get you the oh. shot. KU just slicing and dice on their way through everybody. And there's two more for Vic, and he's got seven. Already five and double figures for the Jayhawks. Only one for the Golden Grizzlies. That's none with 16, and here's another turnover. Yikes. That is 14 turnovers for the Golden Grizzlies. And the Jayhawks having their way on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. New Year's Day is college for This copyrighted telecast of KU Athletics may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of IMG and the University of Kansas Athletics. Let's look back at those scores in the Big 12. And again, West Virginia, big winner. Texas let Duke off the hook. Longhorns led by 13 in the second half, and Duke comes back to win in overtime. Oklahoma, and I want to apologize to Alon Kruger and company. The Sooners won that game, not lost. We had that score reversed earlier. Apologize for that. Oklahoma goes to 3-1 and one overall. TCU wins by two, so they remain unbeaten at 5-0. and oh. And Kansas State well in front of George Washington in the second half. And the Wildcats are looking to go to 5-1 and one on the year. I think the Big 12 going to be really good this year. Yeah. Kansas favored again. And if they win it, it's their 14th. Be the all-time record. Most conference championship seasons in a row. Any division. As a pookie, what a touch. How did he do that? Coming off that ball screen, and again, Legereau set that up again. Similar to what Malik Newman did the play before, coming off that ball screen. He kind of hesitated, took a little step back to, to create the defense to force and get him, and then he just lobbed it up to Udoka. Let the big guy go get it. Six the for beast. seven from the game. Now there's Jalen Hayes back in there. Missed the first four games with an academic 
suspension is sort of a technicality more than anything else. In my mind, kind of a silly rule. Yeah. Uh, should have been playing, but, you know, that's what it is sometimes. And so good to see him back out there. Meanwhile, another three missed. Makes it two for 16 for the Golden Grizzlies. Vic, another nice pass from Newman. Great job by Vic running the floor on that possession. He was clearly behind Devontae and Malik who had the ball on that possession and was able to sprint those lanes and get, get an a easy wide open dunk. Great setup by Malik too. Hayes almost lost the handle and then just handed it to Mikhailu. As a boop, he tried to get his own miss. Yeah. I think he got lost under the hoop. He did. I, I couldn't tell if he was trying to dunk it as well, too. Yeah. <laughs> big fella's leading the floor, though. Look at this. Yeah, when you can get the big guy leading the floor and ha with Devontae's leadership and vi court vision, he's going to be able to see that all day. Chris Piper always talks about the big fella runs, you got to reward him. Is you that right? You have to. You have to because they, they always get stuck under the basket and uh, guards take a lot of credit. I was a card guard. They sh we shoot the ball a lot. So, and it really, you know, the, the bigs don't get the ball as much in their hands. So when they run the floor, you got to reward them. You're going to nitpick KU tonight. It's offensive rebounding. They only have three offensive rebounds out of 17 missed shots. And again, nitpicking, nitpicking. Yeah. Well, it, you know, in order to go deep into to the season, those nitpicking things, they have to become strengths, and you have to, you have to focus in on those things yeah. because once you start playing against these top teams, they're going to do all the little things. Walker trying to adjust his shoelaces. Give it up to none. None working off a pick with one on the shot clock buries it. He and makes none it with 18. Yeah, he makes it look easy. You can tell he's a he's just a natural scorer. And Graham just hit it right off the back heel of Hayes. A launch three by Neely that misses again. And a whistle and a foul on the rebound. This will be the first team foul on KU this half, and it's on Mikhailu. That's his second of the game. Now Graham and Azabuki will get a breather. Lightfoot checks back in along with Marcus Garrett. So Devontae Graham much deserved rest with 14 points, five assists, but he does have four turnovers, so I know he's not happy about that. Oh, no, you, to be a point guard, especially be the leader of your team, you, you hate those those turnovers. You know, the last two games before this game, Devontae had 22 assists and two turnovers, so he's definitely going to be uh, going back, watching film to see what he could have done better. Here comes Vic. Look at the vision up the court. And the flash to the bucket. But Gerald Vick is just so explosive. He's so quick in the in the break, and he's so long. It, it looked like he took two dribbles to get from half court to the to the to the basket. Unreal. Neely will try another three. First one he's made this year. He went 0 for 6 to start the season, and finally nails one. Now Garrett. Kylo gets a two. Doesn't go. Lightfoot tries to gather it in, but no. Palmer had it. Now none. Oh, he's smooth. Yeah. He's smooth. That's smooth, yeah. That's good. <laughs> it looks like Oakland's starting to get a little confidence right now. None with 21. He leads all scores. Lightfoot didn't really have position. Good idea to get it back out. Smart play. And that's what he's going to have to do, make smart plays like that. Don't force it. That was a wasted possession. Yeah, Jay Hawks just selling a little bit. Get that ball from the, on the second and third side and make that defense work. When you're up 30, you can afford a wasted possession. A couple. <laughs> Six straight points by Oakland. Vick. Nope. 
Kyler tried to keep it alive. Here comes Nunn with Garrett on his hip. Oh, and everybody, it was yeah. like the Red Sea parted. Both Newman and Vic just stood aside and watched Nunn go right down the paint. He is a exciting scorer. He just has a knack for that rim. Vic turns the corner again. And he'll go to the line. He is bumped hard by Julius Palmer. We'll get a timeout. Jayhawk still comfortably ahead on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. Well, six of the Jayhawks are in double figures, and right now KU leading 75-47. Tonight's Dream Bigger stat is steals. Brought to you by the Kansas Lottery Dream Bigger Powerball drawings every Wednesday and Saturday night. Next drawing for an estimated $149 million. Kansas. 10 steals tonight. Yeah, they're getting after it on the defensive end, reading those pass lanes, and they're doing a great job off the ball, denying one pass away, just making it easier on themselves. If it's, if it's tough for your man to catch the ball, it's going to get the other team out of their offense, and they're doing a great job of that. You know, one thing, though, the Golden Grizzlies, much better offensively this half. They went 10 for 34 in the first half, and Oakland in the second half, 9 for 16. Now, here's what Gerald Vick. All five starters for KU in double figures, and Mitch Lightfoot, who did not start, also in double figures with 11. And to me, it's crazy that Legero Vic is the leading rebounder right now, but you has how athletic he is. You can yeah. imagine that he could get those rebounds, but uh, this is a guy that's very athletic, and he's the, leading, the team's leading rebounder right now. Yeah, he's averaging seven a game, and he has seven tonight. James is going a couple of minutes without a field goal. None, meanwhile. Oh. Another block as a bookie. There you go, Steve. Tough shot. Nope. He's missed two in a row. None. And no basket. Foul first. Foul Malik Newman. And that's his second foul. Yeah, this is a great, yeah, big fella getting off his feet on this, and obviously it's good to see him getting active and sprint the floor on the other end. They gave him the ball. He made a great move, just went in and out. None. Oh. And that'll be an offensive foul on none. It looked like Three fouls on none. It looked like he tweaked his ankle on that play, and that's yeah. something that the Grizzlies do not want to afford, getting, hit, getting that guy hurt. So three fouls on none, also three on Hayes. Four team fouls this half on the Golden Grizzlies. About the halfway point of the second half. As Abuki off. Great Once he shooter. pushes his opponent, in this case Palmer, up the paint, yeah. no chance. Yeah, and that's what Coach Self is looking for out of his big, especially when you're just you and the big man on the other end. You want to push him up the lane so they the yards can just get that little touch pass over the top. 15 points for Azubuki in 14 minutes. Daniels launches deep three. Deep Those three. are ones you kind of give him. Yeah, you do. Right? Yeah, Devontae had a hand up, yeah. and that's what you want. You want to contest every shot. It's contested, but they hit that. Well, none poked it away, and then Vic gets it back. Four on two, wide open. Nice. Malik gets his feet set. It's tough for him to miss wide open shots like that. Newman now. He's got 13 points, which matches the most he's had in a Jayhawk uniform. He once scored 25 when he was at Mississippi State against Ole Miss. Good interior passing by Hayes, and the rest is easy for Palmer. And that was great ball movement by Oakland. Getting the ball moving, multiple guys touching the ball in that possession. This makes it easier to score when you have different guys touching the ball. And Zabuki with the left hand. Nope, got his own miss. Nice. And one. Big Fellin still eating, not giving up on any possessions. Quick miss, 
quick feet to get up and get his rebound. You gotta like a big fella that's gonna go chase his rebound and not just settle for for one shot. He's he's taking upon himself to say, if hey, if I miss this first one, I'm going to get this second one. Hayes came over to help out right there and committed his fourth foul. So now as a bookie, who's one for three from the line. I think he should go back to that practice shot before he shoots that free throw. Yep. Yeah, he needs to develop a constant system yeah. of shooting, right? He, you can't change it up. Team, yeah. yeah, especially on the free throw line. You want to stay consistent as possible. Kind of like golfers. You watch yeah. them with their pre-shot routine. You want a pre-shot routine from the free throw line yes. for Azubuki. Then it's just habit. Yep, that's right. Do the same thing over and over. Oh, that could have been goaltending, but it wasn't. Was coming down. Now Graham is trying to get it up to go. And instead blocked away by Brock. Back out Palombizio. Thought he made it. That's that bad. one's to dope. He didn't miss that one. Again, as a bookie, patting his stats on the free throw percentage. Good contest. Yeah. And a tie-up. Arrow will give it to KU. Let's give the big fella credit, though, from running end Dunks to end. It. Easy pass from, from Devontae to Udoka. Just easy basketball. Texans. Rip White. And trust me, she's happy. 85-52, our score right now. Why wouldn't you be happy? Husband's team is just playing great. And coming up Sunday, the women are in action. You can watch that game here on Spectrum Sports. One o'clock. And Jayhawks will take on the Rice Owls. That's coming up Sunday at one o'clock. Kansas off to a good start in women's basketball as well. 85-52, our score here. As a bookie, by the way, with 19 points in the game. He's getting a lot of easy buckets. Yeah, he's getting a lot of easy buckets. He has seven dunks in the game. A little hook. Oh. That was unlucky. That was halfway down and back out. He's struggling. Nine for 14. Yeah, <laughs> that's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. And poked away. It'll stay with Oakland. Seems like but, Oakland's going to be chugging up some shots right now. So yeah. KU wants to make sure they're just uh, giving them only one shot attempt per possession. Oakland catching up in the rebound department. They were trailing by double figures earlier, and now it's only a five rebound edge for KU. Interesting to have Azabuki and Lightfoot playing at the same time. Possibility of some high low act. Yeah, maybe some two games coming out. Garrett, one on two, will pull it back out. Graham for three. Nope. Azabuki had it and then let it go behind his head and stole it away. And then he got it back when he poked it off Hayes. I think that. I think that's a pet peeve for a coach when just not being strong with the ball, just knock it out your hand. Uh, Udoke needs to get that rebound and put it right to his chin right away. 19 points, nine rebounds for Azabuki. Kylo, a little floater, nope. And Hayes has that rebound. I'll tell you, here's one of the amazing stats of the night. In points off turnovers, Kansas, 22 to 2, the advantage in points off turnovers. 22 I mean, it's, to yeah, 2. It's a different ball game if, you know, Oakland can, can minimize that. It's just a, it's a whole different ball game. But you got to credit KU to taking advantage of when the other team makes a mistake, they're capitalizing on that. Well, part of the steals, 12 of them for the Jayhawks tonight. As a bookie again. Clear the traffic. Oh, shot with the left hand. And that gives him a new career high at 21. 
I think the cool thing about watching Udoka throughout the season is that he's gonna, his touch and, and feel around the basket is going to continue to get better. He's still figuring himself out. It's amazing to score 21 points when most of your shots are within three feet of the yeah, basket. It's Duncan, yeah. yeah. So start calling him Udunka. <laughs> See, I always wanted his last name to be pronounced Azabuki because then he could be the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things you think yeah. about, folks, when it's 87 <laughs> <laughs> Your coach self yelling out too, game. A little high low action. Taken from behind by Walker, it'll stay with KU. Kai looks just added another burst of speed. This yeah, year, you know. And you know they were looking to look for the high low out of that. And yeah. you know with speed cutting so hard and cutting back, going back door, that option was open, so they just went ahead and threw him the ball. Pokes it out again. We'll restart this possession for the third time. Garrett gets in. Oh, you made that look easy. Yeah. Although he's a defensive guy, his offense is going to conti continue to improve as well. How good is he going to be in a couple of years? Wow. He's good now. Yeah, there's a hook by Garrett. A little caught up on the Garrett. on the screen. And that'll be his third foul, fourth team foul on KU this half. Not a lot of fouls called in this second yeah. half. Only five on Oakland, four on Kansas. What happens with a veteran crew? You just want to keep a game like this yeah, going. Keep it going. That's smart, really. Helps protect the players yes. that way, honestly. As long as it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, you, you know? don't want anything getting out of hand. Cause nope. Especially with this Jayhawk team, they, they need everybody they can get. Mikhailo, that's a two. And the rebound goes to Beck. Beck's a good looking freshman for the Golden Grizzlies. Stan Scott with it now to Beck. Hayes blocked. And Devontae Graham got finger in the eye. Looks like he's wincing, but okay. And now Jerry Pollard will stop action to make sure he's okay. Good officiating. Jerry Pollard, Kelly Self, Roland Simmons, all are good officials. Right there. Oh, ah, on the follow through, coming down. Have you ever, you hate when when players get hit in the eye because there's some some players that have had some some bad situations coming from that. So it's good to see that Devontae's okay. Yeah, he's fine. As a rookie again, backs in off the glass. No, right foot's there though. Couldn't quite find the handle on it. Poked out of bounds with under four minutes to go in the ball game. And the Jayhawks comfortably ahead on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. New Year's Day is college football playoff day. Well, the Jayhawks certainly had their way with the Golden Grizzlies tonight. And Grandpa having a good time at the game. <laughs> She's ready to wave some wheat. Yes. The Jayhawks are ready to go to 5 and 0 on the year. 89-54 our score. The Jayhawks 
comfortably ahead. Coming up next, Toledo on Tuesday. We'll have that one for you right here on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network. Newman gives it up with a shot clock at three. Vic. Oh, that's a good way to end it. You know, Ladrell Vic is starting to remind me a little bit of what Devontae did for Frank last year. Oh. Just hitting those tough, tough shots when they need one. Somebody has to take that role. Block again by Lightfoot. Vic with 15. Starting to see like. Ladrell Vick is starting to get more confidence from shooting with a hand in his face. Good job by Ladrell getting his feet set, creating separation, and getting the shot off. He's two for three from three-point range tonight, and that makes him about 58% yeah. from three-point range this year. He's playing with unbelievable confidence this year. I think I'd be confident, too, if I had yeah. this talent. <laughs> Garrett with a little floater. Now he's got six. And Jayhawk six away from the Magic 100 mark. Palombizio a three that won't go. You know, I think this is a Jayhawk team that can give you 40 minutes of good play. You haven't seen that in the past with Jayhawk teams. Nice step through by Newman. Nice. And he's got 15. Jayhawks, 52 points in the paint tonight. Wow. They have outscored the Golden Grizzlies by 30 in that department. Wow. Take away the rest of their points, and it's just a game just off the paint. Jayhawks yeah. will be down by two. <laughs> and Hayes steps back in the short corner. Coach just wants to sub in. He wants to get Chris Tien into the game. And Vic will come out. No after effects from a big Thanksgiving dinner for these Jayhawks. Oh, no. I'm starting to wonder if they did, even they're waiting to eat after the game, because mm. they are ready to go. They didn't look sluggish. They came out ready to go with a lot of energy. Sure did. Tian tries to turn the corner, and now here it will. Oh, little dipsy do, if you will. I think this is a good time for, for Garrett to, to be aggressive in attack and, and really work on his, his offensive skills. Lightfoot last to touch it. Yeah, he's got eight points. He could be that seventh Jayhawk to be in double figures for the second straight game. For the second straight. That's very impressive. That's a, that's a good stat line. When you know you can get seven of your guys that have played the majority of minutes in double figures, it makes it tough for the defense to figure out who to stop. Another block for Lightfoot and a rebound. Tian. God, desperate for him yeah. to shoot it. He can Garrett. shoot it. Young also in there. Garrett, steal. And lost the handle. Good try, though. Yeah. Garrett last game had 13 points, 11 rebounds against Texas Southern. And now he's got eight points, three rebounds in this one. Palombizio. It's a long windup for that shot. Here comes Young. Drop pass for Tian for three. Oh. Oh. Crowd would have went crazy on that. Chris Tian now one for six this year from three-point range. Hit that one against South Dakota State. And it's funny because he shoots exactly. Him and Connor, his brother, have the exact same form. They yeah. look the same. I always call him Connor with red hair. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett, now he's in double figures. Seven people in double figures, wow. And that's 100 for the Jayhawks for the second straight game. 
Impressive, impressive game by the Jayhawks. They, this is a team that I really believe can play 40 minutes of great basketball, both offensively and defensively. Jayhawks in their last three games have averaged more than 100 points. That's impressive. <laughs> Funny, I was I was talking to my wife a while back. I'm like, this is a team that can lead the nation in scoring. Yeah. This is a this is a team that is very explosive. On the offensive end, they they can stretch the D, and obviously with the uh, the big the good play from their bigs inside, they can go inside out. This is going to be a tough team as they continue to jail down the road. Alambizio quiets the crowd. They're still standing for Chris Tian and Jayhawk will dribble out the clock. Wow, that was impressive. That was a fun game to watch. Against a team that most likely will win the Horizon yes. League. So the Jayhawk dominate the Golden Grizzlies. 102 to 59, the final score, and Kansas goes to 5 0 on the year. Wow. Gonna be a lot of good basketball watching this, this Jayhawk team throughout the year, especially if they can play with that type of intensity, uh, both offensively and defensively. They're gonna be a fun team to watch. With the help of Sun Cunliffe coming at the after uh, after Christmas as well too, so they'll have another piece to to, to to give them a little bit more depth. But it's gonna be fun to watch watch this group gel as a team. Jeff Hawkins, you're the pinch hitter of the year. Pardon me. You're the pinch hitter oh, of the year. <laughs> Good job. It was fun working with Jeff Hawkins tonight on the Jayhawk IMG Sports Network. Coming up Tuesday, Chris Piper will be back in the saddle when Kansas takes on Toledo. That's coming up at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Until then, for all of our crew here in Lawrence, Kansas, Dave Armstrong saying so long. Stay tuned next for the post-game show. It's coming up on the Jayhawk IMG Television Network.